All right, if you want to go to Google Drive where your docs are, and we'll just do a quick form here. Forms are really useful. Under Create right here, you have all these different choices, form being one yes. of them. So that's what you want to choose here is create a form. And it should pop right up for you. You get to choose a cheesy background. Their choices are just lovely. And you also get to put your name in here. So I'm just going to put example or something. Okay, that's fine. The only way you can do it is if you go to the internet and log on to the internet version of Google, like the web page, you can do it. Okay. Yeah. Google and Apple don't like each other, so they don't play nice. So you pick a nice one. I always like the fish. I don't know why. You won't see it now. And then here's your form. So you got your title up at the top. And you can write a description right here if you want. Any instructions, kind of things in general. And then you write your question here. The main thing in help us here. So the main thing um, to look at here are the choices. So these are the kinds of questions you can ask. You can do text. So I like to start with a text because what's the first thing you want to ask? Your name. And if you have a, if you have an account, a Google Apps account for your school, um, it should have this on there where you can automatically have it collect all their addresses. Don't, because we have shps.org and shpslearn.org, and they don't talk well. Don't click those boxes. That's what's holding me back when I try to do this. So don't click those. Okay. So don't for you, say their name. for South Haven, don't do it. But. No, 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 no. Do, don't check those so you're going to want your name, and that's just a text one here, and it shows you a little box here. The other thing you want to click is right here, required question, because you definitely want them to answer this. Otherwise, it's worthless to you. Yeah, help test, you can write in whatever there. I tend not to use that too much myself. Um, then your options right here are delete, duplicate, Edit. I like to duplicate because I'm lazy. So I'm going to make a duplicate question and change name to our. Something else you might want to ask. And then I'm going to duplicate again if I want something similar. Does that make sense? Then when I'm done, I need to do a new one. I'm going to hit done. Now I'm going to hit add item. In this one, there's going to be a question I need to ask them. So I could do multiple choice, and you're going to have options. Um, what is your favorite color? And I can put blue, which it should be, or red, or green. And I can also put add other if I want to give them that choice on something where I want to collect and give them another choice. I can do that. I always, pretty much everything I do I want to be required. Once in a while not, but if I'm asking a question, I want them to answer it. Um, oh, you know what? I don't, I'm not sure I like that. So I'm going to go back. We can edit it and we can change it to checkbox. What? English, I gotta get this right. What are your favorite colors? And now they can check off multiple answers. So if I have something I want to get multiple feedback on here, you know, pick your favorite things from this list. So you know, depending on the purpose of your form, check boxes may be a better choice. Um, choose from a list is another one where it's pretty similar. I forget the oh, this also has this nice feature they've added go to page based on answer. You can actually link multiple forms together. So if you wanted to, if they could choose blue, they're going to go to different questions. So if you have kind of those layers of questions, I personally don't get into that too much, but it is a feature in there in Google Docs. So um, yeah, you can also make, choose your own from that. Other options would be the scale and um, 
So this one I could change it to something like rate your color blue and it comes here one to five. And then you can label these down here. And you can also change it one to three, one to ten. I think there's limits, but um, so you can rate it and you can tell them this is terrible, this is awesome, you can make fun creative labels, whatever. So if you want to do say school I learned outcome rubric, you know, you could use your rubric right on there. If you have a four, three, two, one scale, you can put that right in there as far as like proficient, advanced. And they're yeah. grading your, their group members. So. Yeah, so I use this to have them grade group members a lot. Um, also, to get feedback from them on things. You know, rate this project. I have, want them to tell me about the project. How would you like this project? Scale 1 to 5, or whatever. You can also do grids, where you're going to have rows and columns. So that one would be a little more complicated, but for different things. And then you can also have date and time put in here. And actually, that just adds it to the spreadsheet, I think, when you're done. So, shouldn't have the question there, but I'm just going to leave that on there. Um, so, I'm pretty basic. I don't use all the layout stuff, but obviously you can put, these are some features they've added recently. You can put images in there. So, if you want to make a little quiz on here. Um, you could put a picture in here if you want to interpret it or a video. So that's a nice feature for those, like a political cartoon. For me, a social study, I put a political cartoon and ask them a question about it. Um, but then the one I use a ton is paragraph text. So if I'm asking them to rate their group members, I put paragraph text so they can have lots of room to write. And it's unlimited space there. So rate your members. Rank your members in order. So that's the basic of setting up in the, in the parts of that. The other things that you do then. At top here, you can view it live, and this is what it's going to look like. Oh, so this lets you set the date. I have never used that one, so I want I want to play with that one. But they would they'd fill this out. Bill first. By the way, I I don't like I would not do this one like this. I just did it. I wouldn't make a checkbox because you're going to get all these different animals. And so someone's going to write one, someone's going to write first, someone's going to write out the word first, and then they get sorted funny. So in order to make your sorting easier, you should use a checkbox in this, and then they check first, second, third, whatever. And then you can sort them, which is what you want to do as a teacher. And then one for me, of course, two for Joe. Quick, quick question for you. Yes. The your hour having sorted, when I did this earlier, I made a different one for every class, so that the responses are different spreadsheets. You can have it set up so that if they put one, mm -hmm. then it goes in one spreadsheet. If they put two, it goes in You can sort one. it. No, it will go in one spreadsheet, but you can sort it. So have it, have it sorted in order by that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, cool, cool. Oh. Let's see now. I didn't hit the accepting responses. Let's see if it'll let me submit. Please let me submit. Because that was a sample one, it wouldn't let me submit. So once you get here, you go to responses. And I always forget where it's at here. View live form. There we go. I had to hit that first. What? I must double click. There we go. View live form. Really? There we go. So, uh, I gotta redo this. I don't care. And we'll just do blah 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 here. Submit. This is what student gets back. Um, you can turn off the settings so they can only submit once. But then you go back here and you choose your response destination. 
I like to do. You can do a new spreadsheet or existing. So I guess I'm trying to think about your question. If you do it more one, I find it pretty easy to just do it in one. You just have to go to one and then you like choose the sort option in the response spreadsheet, not in this. Yeah. So I go here and here's what I get. And I get all my stuff in one spot right here, all in rows. And you can sort any of these columns by going right up here. And I can click on this. Obviously, I don't have responses in here, but if I did, it would let me sort these. And that would put all the ones together, all the twos together. They don't take it all at the same time. So you can sort it by names, alphabetical order, put it in grade book. You can sort it by hours, and all your stuff is in one spot. You can do sort by hour, then last name, alphabetical order. No, you can't sort by two things. That sounds more like what, what, yeah, what you could do is sort of an hour though, and then yeah. copy that hour and paste it on a separate page in the spreadsheet, and then sort of yeah. Yeah. Or if you yeah. want to do that extra. Yeah. Um, so that nice, quick, easy way to get feedback. And actually create quizzes. Oh, so one other step. I know you're not all one-on-one, -on -one, but something to think about. There's a tool called Cloveroo, and it will, as long as you make it multiple choice, it will create it for you. So you you submit you it's an add-on that you put on this and then what it does is you fill it out with the correct answers and it compares their answers to that flowroo f l u d a r o o. One of the coolest features is you can discover responses using pie charts you can see everything yeah super quick super easy yes and that's a good point I shouldn't have one that you could fill out. But yeah, all the charts are here under view. Um, whoop, where did that go? Yeah, right here. Insert. Um, and, and because I. Exactly. That's how you prove that 80% means standard on the things by. It's really nice for pre-assessment too, because now you don't really care about individual responses. You can look at the charts and see 90% of the kids got this one right. They get this, this, they bomb this one. So now you know where they're strong and weak. So it's good for pre-assessment. Awesome. How do you share this with them to have them take it? Good question. Because like I'm trying to create my groups, so I can just put it on the group page thing. I so once you have it in your, it'll be in your Google Docs. Yeah. You're gonna come to this page. And you um. I always forget where it is on here. You go right here. Send form. And you just take the link. You can send form if you have an email list. What, what I usually do is. You can embed it in the web page if you have a blog or something. So then the form itself will be right there. You take it right on your site. So that's an option. I can share it in that photo too. Yeah. Yes. Or what I do is go to live form, and then you just share the URL. You copy and paste the URL link. Yeah. So really big 